Hi, welcome back to the Pro Pilot Playbook Podcast. I'm Mike Martin. And I'm Sean Ritchie. Yes, and we are here with you weekly now to help you launch your aviation career. We are, we've are we both had great careers in aviation, and uh, we just want to spread the word and get more people involved in aviation. And uh, we love your questions, and that's what we've been doing mainly. We've been getting so many great questions from people that uh, that's been the topic for, for many of our podcasts. But uh, today's a special Christmas episode. Yeah, it's Christmas really episode. Special. Yeah, hey. <laughs> it's uh, it's uh, what the day, a couple days here before Christmas. So we wanted to wish everyone a, a Merry Christmas. And uh, Sean actually got me something. I didn't get him anything so <laughs> for Christmas. So I'm I'm that kind of friend. You know what I mean? No, it, we've never got each other anything for Christmas anyway, ever. I actually, I prefer that. I'd, I'd just like to skip Christmas for one year, one of these days, but, um, he outdid himself this year though. Well, I happen to be down there anyway, and I know, uh, you love it just as much as I do. (laughs) I had, I just got back from a trip. Yeah. I just, uh, spent the weekend, uh, in and out of Naples, Florida. And if uh, the little airport there in Naples, right across the street from the airport is a, uh, is a barbecue joint. It's been there for uh, over, thir- I think, 30 some years. I think I saw on their menu. Wow. Just recently when I was there. But uh, it's called Mickle Bob's. And yeah. This place is fantastic. Every corporate pilot knows Mickle Bob's because it's just literally you park the jet and then walk across the street and right there's Mickle Bob's. And uh, yeah, it is some killer sauce. So yeah. Sean got me not just one bottle, but three. It surprised <laughs> me with that. So I was very happy to get that. Um, it yeah. does taste better when it's 80 degrees in December uh, and you're eating it under a palm tree. I will say that than yeah. it does in Cincinnati when it's 23 degrees and blowing uh, cold outside. But it's but it was still fantastic nonetheless. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. place is amazing. I mean, I was reading like they fly the, they fly the meat, the meats all imported from somewhere in Europe. I don't know. It, they've got it going on. They're Canadians. They actually, I think the owners or something, right? Yeah. I don't. Yeah. I, I'm not. They got the hell out of Canada. <laughs> right. <laughs> but they have a gold. big, if you've ever driven through there, it's the one with the big sign. It says uh best ribs in America, I think, or something mm-hmm. like that. Yeah. Yeah. It's really good. Now you're making me hungry, man. We're going to have to stop <laughs> this, this podcast now. Uh, but yeah, oh, yeah. so uh, anyway, Christmas, Merry Christmas, everybody. Um, yes. we, we, I think we got a great question now from, is it Dean? Is it? Yes, Dean. Yeah, yeah. What, did, what did he ask? Dean, uh, another comment on YouTube. Uh, remember, it, it, we, I think we're really digging, Mike just said this, so we're yeah. really digging this question uh, type of format. So if you guys have a question for us, uh, submit the question uh, via email at podcast at propilotplaybook.com and we'll answer it on an episode. Um, Dean sends in here, uh, and Dean doesn't say where he is. This came in just in, we're trying to get through all these things, but this is November 15th. Dean sent this in. Hey guys, really love the podcast you got going on. I am a student pilot that just finished my second solo. Now awesome. onto my cross country work. I uh, wanted to ask you guys if you have any advice or tips for my cross country. And most importantly, I wanted to know how I can navigate finding a doctor that can get me my medical. I'm in the Chicago area. Wanted to know if there's a website to see all the doctors and wanted to know if insurance would cover it. Uh, probably not, but all the advice you can give me would be extremely helpful. Thank you for your time. All right. Well, thanks for the question, Dean. Uh, a yeah. couple questions in there. Um, Cross country advice. Well, so that's more of a technical thing. We don't have a problem getting it. Actually, we, in the program we sell, there are some technical stuff and some of it deals with cross country work. Uh, Dean, the cross country work you're talking about is, you know, right there in your, your private pilot. That's very fundamental type of, of work. You know, you're getting, getting all your numbers, uh, via you know, get your winds aloft, you got your plotter out, your E6B computer, and you're figuring out all the fundamental stuff uh, with that. Um, 
yeah. it's actually a very exciting part of your training. I would oh, say. Actually, what? Yeah. What do you got, man? I just realized. I just realized this was sitting here in my office. You're you're using one of these. Oh, okay. nobody's using that anymore, Sean. Well, for your private pilot, yes, and that's that's actually if you want a tip, this is my tip to you, um, <laughs> because we live in a world now where you know there's four flight on our phone. There's, you know, all this computer stuff out there that will literally figure this out um, in seconds. And it's a no brainer for anybody to be able to take a cross country. But for that private pilot stuff, for that early on fundamental stuff, my suggestion is stick with what your instructor's teaching you with the, you know, doing it the long way. You'll never do it again in your career as a pilot. But if you don't have that fundamental uh, basis of, of where it all comes from and how it works, um, you just don't have the whole correlation of, of, you know, so that, that would be my tip where you're at is that's a great tip that, that uh, eat flight computer he's got there too. I mean, that thing, it's it, actually not that difficult to you use. To, yeah. You got the wind scale in the back. Yeah. yeah. What I love about it though, is if you leave that on your desk, like he has, and people see that they're like, Man, that guy is smart. I bet you <laughs> gotta know what you're doing to use that. I wouldn't even know the first thing. And it's really easy. It's very, very neat thing to do conversions and all that. But um, yeah, so Dean, you should be excited about this part of your training. It's it's one of the best things. If you're an adventurous, you're actually going somewhere. You're going somewhere on your own. You're testing everything that you've learned up, up, uh, up so far. It's a little scary because you're on your own. And, uh, it, it, it's, it's a lot like what you're going to be doing professionally. Cause what do you do professionally? You fly people places. All, all you've been doing in your training so far is just flying around the airport and wasting gas, right? That's not what we do professionally. We take people places. So, uh, that's a really exciting thing for you to be able to start your cross country and start doing that. Um, and, uh, I agree with Sean, uh, and, and we use the things that you use every day because there's always a visual segment of uh, all flights um, um, unless the weather's super crappy but but uh, typically when you're coming in in a jet to land there's a point where you transition from instruments to visual conditions and you need to find the airport so that training that you have you know we're coming in you know 20 30 miles out you, you need to be able to spot the field and it's a technique that you learn to be able to tell where these airports are and we're looking at the alignments of the runway and where streams are and it's it's relative to downtown where oh okay there's the airport um and you know in rural areas that's what you're looking at but even in congested areas you go to a place like uh, new york city or or uh an example would be south florida if you're going into um southeastern florida where you have uh, you have so many airports with all the same runway alignments on a row. So, you know, if they're bringing you down the East coast and they say, Hey, you're, you know, the Fort Lauderdale airport is uh, one o'clock and 20 miles. Let me know when you have in sight, you'll have Fort Lauderdale, Fort Lauderdale, executive Palm beach, uh, Boca Raton, uh, Miami, uh, Miami executive, all these airports are within right. like Florida, five miles. You can throw a rock and hit an airport no matter which right, way. man. So now here you are in a jet doing 250 knots and you're trying to figure out which airport is which. And all of that is based on technique that you're learning right now, which is okay. How long is the runway? Where's the, wh where is this airport? How, how are the runways configured? And, you know, you're trying to spot the airport. Um, and of course, you know, you could end up in a scenario in any airplane where your electric electronic navigation is not working, which is what uh, Sean's referencing. So you got to go back to those fundamentals that you have now where you're using ground reference to know where you're at and also uh, pilotage or, you know, where in dead reckoning uh, pilotage is using the ground dead reckonings, you know, using headings and wind correction angles and all that stuff. So um, it's all that, all those layers will be used later in, in your training. And so it's a very fun time and uh, you know, enjoy it. And uh, once you get your license, then you can take someone and, you know, it's nice to have for flight and those GPSs and absolutely know how to use them for a backup in case you do get disoriented, you know, you can immediately, use that for situational awareness, but yeah, try as hard as you can just to use the old, uh, sectional map. Sure. Yeah. 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 The fundamentals you can't build a house without a funda foundation. That's right. And you're building a foundation right now. That's for sure. Right. Uh, the, uh, yeah, I remember, 
I think, uh, you know, it, it, students get preoccupied with the navigation portion of it, the, uh, the pilotage, the dead reckoning and a straight nav, um, you know, always, uh, you know, bring your head inside the airplane every now and then too. you run across all your systems, your, you know, your, make sure your DG isn't processing, look at your, uh, you know, your engine instruments, um, you know, make sure you got, you're not running the engine too lean, you know, it's yep. a correlation of everything, you know, you make sure you're always looking for a, uh, uh, backup airport, you know, in case you do have a problem. So yep. the, when you're sitting in cruise, you're, you you do not want to be just brain dead. You know, you're looking around, okay, if something goes wrong, where am I going? What's my contingency plan, which we do in a jet too. I mean, we, right. we, we're always thinking about what could go wrong and, you know, um, yeah, in a jet, we're, we're usually thinking, okay, if something happens right now, where am I landing? In that type yep. of airplane, in that uh, portion of your training, you know, that's another good thing. Always be, all right, so if I lose my engine right now, where am I going to land? You know, always have right. that. Always be looking ahead and thinking about that. Yep. Um, yep. yep. Another piece of advice, it wouldn't doesn't really apply to where you're at at the moment in your training, but – as you start working on your instrument rating, I would say um, another good tip would be to try to meet up with another student who's right about the same level of training, working on their instrument, wants to be a professional pilot. And uh, now you have a whole nother world open to uh, join up with this guy. And I don't know. So part of your instrument training is you're going to be flying under a hood. Uh, sometimes it's foggles, sometimes it's an actual hood, but it's a simulated device. Uh, so you fly simulated instrument work in order to do that. You have to have a safety pilot, uh, or an instructor with you. So in order to build time, you know, cause you need that 250 hours for your commercial and you need so much instrument time and flying is expensive. If you have a partner, you guys can split the airplane cost and take a cross country uh, go to a couple different airports. You can fly approaches VFR. Uh, one of right. you is sitting there as a safety pilot. One of you is under the hood and, uh, you're both earning uh, flight time in your logbook for yeah. that. And you can also swap out, you know, you get to where you're going, you swap, eat lunch or something, swap out and fly back. It's a great way to build time at half the cost. And, yeah. uh, and you're getting some simulated instrument time. You can make it a cross country, although I'd have to look back at the commercial requirement. I think most of the big cross country stuff is supposed to be done solo, but it's still time in your logbook. You need 250 hours to get the commercial rating. So a commercial certificate, not rating. Right. And try to make friends with some people around the airport with planes and stuff. A lot of them don't mind if you come along, you can uh, possibly get some experience that way. You know, um, it's so much fun though. I know Sean recently had access to a Cherokee and, uh, 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 it, I had some business to do in Michigan. We live in Cincinnati oh, yeah. and, uh, uh, him and I went flying. We took my two sons. Yeah. That uh, guy let me use the airplane, uh, great for time. the cost of the fuel. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so we, well, yeah, that, that was, that is a great point, Mike. Yeah. Yeah. Great tip. Yeah. You got some of these, some of these guys around the uh, airport that own their own airplanes that maybe they're dying to fly them. <laughs> yeah. 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 And they, you know, sometimes these guys go flying on the weekends by themselves because they don't have anybody that wants to go and they'd love to bring another pilot with them, you know, um, and, and you can always learn stuff. It's always nice to fly different planes too and learn about the performance of different aircraft and all that stuff. So, Absolutely. Yeah. Everybody loves to talk about their planes too. So if you see those guys out, yeah, yeah, ask them about their planes. Right. Uh, let's see the second part of your question here. Uh, the medical stuff, um, we've covered, uh, we've had a whole podcast on medical certificates, but as far as finding your, you know, when I was, I'm, I was trying to remember, you know, as I was reading this, how I found my first medical exam. I think my flight instructor just told me, you know, a couple okay. of names or something, you know? Yeah. Um, this is another networking thing. You know, yeah. You, you know, Chicago's a pretty big city. Most cities, you're probably going to have a couple guys that do it or something. Um, but I would reckon if you just ask a few people out at the flight school, you're going to get at least a half a dozen 
uh, doctors that uh, do these things. Yeah, Chicago's got to have a ton. Yeah, I would go to someone that that somebody else recommends. That's usually the best bet. Um, it, another thing I was thinking when this question came up. Um, so my first AME that I went to was a student of mine. That, AME is a, a aviation medical examiner. Yeah, and he was a doctor, bought a plane, great guy. And I went to him for years. But I guess certain, and this may have been a rarity. I don't know if this helps people or not, but certain AMEs can only do certain classes of medical. So this guy could only give up to, he couldn't give a first class medical. He wasn't certified, which to be a flight instructor, you don't need. And then to be a student pilot and stuff, you don't need any of that. Um, so it was fine. But then when I started flying professionally, I'd been going to this guy for all these years, I had to switch. So, I mean, just make sure if the, the one is fully certified all the way up to first class, if you're going to start going to them and uh, yeah, talk to people. So, excuse me, so you can develop a relationship. And, and the big thing is here, don't be intimidated by this, especially if you're a young guy, I don't know your age or anything, but these are not difficult medical tests. Um, you know, so it's not like you really need to research and find the best person and all that stuff. I mean, um, you know, you're not going to have that. And we end up, I have a relationship with a guy here in Cincinnati, but uh, who's fantastic. But, you know, sometimes now I got to go every six months. Oh my God, I'm over 40. But, uh, uh, and it, it's, it's a problem to get it scheduled, you know, especially you got a lot of flying going on and stuff. Actually my month's December, which is December and June, which are both kind of popular travel months. So right. sometimes I just look for one when I'm on the road, if I got a couple yeah. days off. That's you know? what I was going to say. Uh, the way you were starting to explain that, I, I was afraid you, you were going down a path. You do not have to use the same guy over and over again. It's just a convenience thing. Um, right because you build a relationship and it gets to know you. I've been going to the same guy for years, but, uh, before that guy, I was going to the other guy for years and I have been on the road in situations where I had just been too busy or the scheduling was bad. And I, uh, I've gone to just some random guy on the road back when I was yeah. freight that happened a lot. Right. Um, so you don't have to stick with the same guy. You can always bounce around. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Um, yeah, as far a as a question, website, though. I don't know. I don't know of any like specific thing out there that is a, you got the video profile playbook playing behind you. Uh, yeah. I got a new <laughs> YouTube on my TV uh, and I'm like, yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know of any set website. I'm sure there is. Somebody's probably created that, but I, I'm not aware of anything like that. It, I would just, the flight school is going to know. I mean, they probably got a list of them. Already. Right. Yep. Yep. Yeah. But I'm sure there is one available online somewhere, but, but yeah, not, not a big deal. The, the, the insurance, oh, in I have an insurance pay 10 for minutes. Me. Oh yeah. Did you know about that? Sean? Uh, no, I've never used my insurance. Well, first of all, these things are not that expensive at all. Yeah. I mean, compared to everything else about flying, <laughs> um, I, I, I mean, our first class medicals, mine's a uh, hundred bucks, maybe. Just yeah, I, I think mine's even like eighty five dollars if I don't get the EKG. If you're over forty, oh yeah, whether you have the EKG or not, EKG, that's the difference. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Yes, yeah, so so, it's less than a hundred dollars or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So it's not that expensive, but there are. I third class want... maybe even less than that, which you need a third class for, uh, you know, for for the private pilot certificate. It may be even cheaper. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, but some, I did work for a major company one time and, and we did run it through insurance. Um, uh, most corporate operators though, you just charge it to the company cause it's part of your job, just not through insurance, just charge right. it. Um, but if it does, if, if, if you end up paying for it on your own, um, you can actually probably write that off cause it's, yeah. if you're doing this professionally, you know, it's a tax sure. write off. Sure. Yeah. Um, Oh, one other thing I wanted to mention though, Dean, and for anybody else that's listening, uh, you know, I noticed Dean, you waited, you're already, uh, you know, you've done your solo and now you're working on cross country stuff. I'm sorry. You did not solo. Let's see. Finish my second solo. Yeah. All right. So you applied for the, the student pilot certificate thing to uh, solo. I personally, and we teach that you should be doing this medical examiner thing way earlier than this. Mm. I, uh, not that you've done anything wrong, but we, Mike and I both agree that 
the medical certificate thing should be taken care of early on. Like your first few hours, you realize this is what you want to do. I'm doing this thing. Start taking care of that stuff sooner. Right. Um, and the quick but, reason for that is in case there is an issue, which there very rarely is, but if in case it could be it, some medication you're taking or you took yeah. five years ago that they don't like. Right. Or, uh, some type of surgery you had surgery you had 10 years ago. They want to double who knows? I mean, they can that be jail time. You did. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, that stuff's all bad. Uh, but <laughs> you got to be honest when you're, when you're filling out these applications, they ask you a ton of questions and some of that stuff triggers an alarm at the FAA offices and they want to dig in and ask you more questions or want you to get a follow up something or other. And right. that stuff can burn up valuable time when you're, you know, trying to get through all this stuff. So we recommend getting it done a little sooner, but yep. That's great advice. Yeah. Um, what else, Mike? Nothing, man. What, what kind of airplanes that back there on your shelf there to the, uh, to not, not on the space shuttle side, the other side, is that what's the that? RJ right there? Yeah. What's oh that? yeah. Yeah. This was, uh, it's a little busted up. It used to be on a stand and it, it actually had the rest of the tail, but, uh, this is a CRJ. This is the 200 that I, Oh, flew. okay. Yeah. 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 You flew it's that. It's in there. the Delta colors. It's out. Uh -huh. Nice. Yeah, this is the RJ200. Uh, I flew out of Atlanta for ASA. Great. Several variants of that. I mean, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. This particular model is the 50-seater. It's the 200. This was the first, when I first got on there, bought one of the models. But the kids have gotten a hold of it and destroyed most of it. <laughs> <laughs> Just like everything else in the house. Right. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Awesome. Well, Okay, uh, Dean, thank you for the question, and hopefully we answered it all right. If you have a question for us and we, you would like us to do an episode and answer it on the air here, you can email us at podcast at propilotplaybook.com. Uh, Merry Christmas, everybody. Yeah. Merry Christmas. Have a great Christmas, yes. Yes, and uh, we will see you next week when we talk about uh, New Year's resolutions maybe. <laughs> that sounds great. <laughs> All right. Thanks a lot.